this is Loopline, and in this video I want to talk about the YouTube Video Grabber. So as of version 2.0.0.50, Scrapebox has a YouTube Video Grabber. So first we need some YouTube videos to download so that I can demonstrate this. So let's just do um, Outdoor Services Detroit. Michigan. I happen to be up here in Detroit here, just moved here recently, and I know a couple companies that do outdoor businesses, so why not? So let's start harvesting. Now we can do this a couple of different ways. There is a YouTube videos harvester that'll just harvest straight from YouTube, which is what I'm going to use. I could also do site colon youtube.com and then put this in here. Um, don't know why I need to do that, but you know, you can do that way. You could also do a simple massive run of searching. Say I do a Google search for like 10 different keywords from a competitor and then um, if I hit the YouTube downloader it's just going to pull out all the YouTube videos from all those keyword searches that happen to show up in the top results so maybe I want to limit it to the top 20 results for my you know major competitive keywords and then I can just extract all those videos that rank to see what those are doing. A lot of different ways you can do this um, but so let's just do YouTube gathering here from the youtube.com directly um, and I'll just harvest a little bit we don't need a lot 116 videos is way plenty so we're gonna go to grab check here and then go to grab YouTube videos from harvested URL list it's gonna pull in uh, you'll see status here and then you'll see the video ID so there's a few different things going on here we can get video info which is gonna give us like title and so on and then we can actually download the videos themselves and then we can download only audio tracks from the videos if we want. We have that as an option. We have some filtration options and export options, which we'll talk about at the end. A snapshot option, which is kind of like save everything as it is and then come back to it. And then settings. And settings may not necessarily work exactly as you think they're going to work. So we'll talk more about that in the end as well. Um, I just want to briefly show them to you some connection settings, some quality settings, uh, your internet speed, and where you want to save these. And then of course close so let's get video info here and as it comes through here you can see a lot of uh, obviously stuff here with Detroit on it and um, home related things because of the service market there that I typed in as far as author you can see the authors here and the resolution and then what might not be apparent is there's a lot more info here so we can actually just stretch this out and make it a lot bigger and then we can see everything all at once and so we can see all the way from status info completed that sort of thing and then video ID we get title author resolutions audio quality durations view count likes dislikes publish genre etc so now that I have all this information I can filter different things I can remove entries where the title contains certain words I can remove entries from the author. I can keep entries where the title contains. I can keep entries from the author. I can keep the videos with a resolution of X, that you know, whatever I want to do, so I can choose those. Then I can export this data so I can save all video info to Excel. And again, a snapshot would be if I wanted to save the state as it is. That's probably more relevant when you're downloading videos. So if you download, if I want to go here and download videos and I get, you know, part way through, and obviously these could be, this is a lot of videos, so it could take up a lot of space. So maybe I get 13 videos downloaded and, you know, that sort of thing. I can save this snapshot here. And then, you know, if I would restart my computer a couple of three days from now, I want to come back and download some more. I can load that snapshot and then just pick up downloading right where I left off, which is very handy because obviously it can take a lot of bandwidth to download these videos because they could be huge. Next, we want to look at the actual settings again. So we had our settings for getting info which in this case I have set to 20. Uh, I do have some proxies going on here in the background. Bear in mind this is a Google service. Um, so I have 50 proxies loaded that are private proxies. It's a Google service. So you can get your IP band. If you go in here to settings and crank this up to you know, 200 and don't use any proxies, then they're probably going to ban your IP pretty fast. So now's a good time to talk about the settings a little bit more in depth before we download videos. The connections for grabbing video files works in chunks. So it goes all the way from 1 to 16. I've got 50 proxies, so I can crank this up to 16. Obviously, it's going to go faster. If I don't have solid proxies, then it's going to be somewhat irrelevant because obviously this is going to be a bandwidth intensive process. So let's talk about these over here. Video quality, pretty basic. Um, it's going to download the highest quality but you can choose you know check and rearrange the video quality based on priority 
um, and then you can uncheck those entries and they'll be ignored. So you can rearrange them. If I wanted to focus on 480 videos here, I can put this at the top or I can leave it here. If I uncheck 480 videos, it's not going to download those, so on and so forth. Same thing with audio quality. Uh, same thing applies. You can rearrange them and you can do, you know, uncheck them. Now your bandwidth in megabit per second, you can hit check here and it'll pop open a, uh, I think it pops open like speedtest.net, but it's pop open a speed tester and you can test to see what your bandwidth is. I happen to know that I happen to be on a 75 megabit connection here at my office. Um, I actually get like 85 uh, most of the time it's through Xfinity so they sell me 75 but I usually get like 85 or 87 or whatever so I'm just gonna put in 75. Now based off of the bandwidth in megabit per second that you put in you can auto calculate the chunk size. Obviously you can see here if I put in that I'm on a you know a 6 megabit DSL connection it's going to calculate a smaller chunk size. The chunk size is basically the video gets broken up into chunks. So if I have a video that's 10 megabytes it'll get broken up into chunks and downloaded. Now the faster the connection I'm on the bigger chunk size I can work with but I don't want to run into where I have a bunch of chunks being partially downloaded and then connections are timing out and that sort of thing. So if I were to punch in a huge chunk size here but have a slow connection I might get a ton of partial chunks downloaded and then it might fail which means I'm just starting over so basically I would let this auto calculate the chunk size and punch in your connection speed here you can see when I go back to 75 I get a bigger chunk size say I am on a thousand megabit connection um, it's going to give me a much bigger chunk size if I'm on you know a dedicated server maybe a hundred megabit PPS so on and so forth so we'll go with uh, 75 since that's what I'm using and auto calculate the chunk size and then choose where you want these to be saved at and then we can select the target folder where it's either going to put the mp4 video files now as far as actually downloading back to the chunk size the connections for grabbing video files is 16 that's 16 chunks at once not necessarily 16 videos at once so it's only going to download one video at a time but it's going to take it into chunks so i just wanted to explain that so when we go over here and hit download videos and we only see one downloading we can see what's going on now we can see down here in the status it talks about lots of different things here your resolutions and tells you things but here in the status you can see as it is downloading and you can see 16 connections running now if I were to put this at one connection you would see this status bar go across here a lot slower because it's only downloading one piece at a time rather than 16 pieces at a time another thing to keep in mind is and you can see the connections going down as it finishes that video and once it's done it will move on to the audio download and do the same thing because it downloads the video and the audio separately and then when that's done it's going to move on to the next video so if I have a bunch of private proxies that all happen to be running on one server, like all from the same IP range, then even if I put in a bunch of connections, it may seem slower than if I'm downloading directly from my own IP. So you can experiment. Um, private proxies may or may not necessarily be faster on this. If you have a fantastic connection and pretty slow private proxies in general, um, you know, because posting to websites or harvesting doesn't really take loads of bandwidth at once but this is just solid downloading so you can experiment you might be better off with one connection especially if you only have like five private proxies your one connection without using proxies might be faster than those five private proxies if they're all on an overloaded VPS bear that in mind as you work through there and we can see it's downloading the videos itself and then when we're done of course we have the option to go and view those videos so let me pull them up here and so we can see it created a folder based on the date here 9 27 2015 which happens to be the date this was recorded and you can see it's downloaded the videos here and we can see right here at the top we had two completed so they're here and the third one is stopped this is where saving a snapshot would be great and then I can come back and load the snapshot later and pick up right where I left off and so that is how the YouTube video grabber works how you can get great stats and info obviously lots of great keywords you could do keyword research you can see what other market competitors are doing you can get lots of great ideas lots of different data here like likes and view counts and that sort of thing we can see what's popular all at a glance obviously we could sort these things um, and see that you know this particular video here is a lot more likes or view count by far than the rest of them and obviously it may not be related to them but the point is is that lots of great data here that you can use for all sorts of different things and then you can also download the video and the audio as well and that is the YouTube video grabber. Thanks for watching this Scrapebox video. For more Scrapebox videos, click the subscribe button on your screen or click the subscribe button down below.